Hello, Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Governor of Secrets of Longevity.com. I've talked a lot about hormonal health on this channel, in particular with male hormonal health, because we see and experience so many things in the world that can damage and detract from our uh, masculine prowess uh, in the hormonal health department. Uh, females' health is also impacted by these things, but it tends to work in a different way. And I think also there's an extra factor in society which is more cultural that has a bigger impact on men's uh, masculinity in that uh, the way that it's built and expressed from the hormonal health standpoint. So I think most people would agree with me if I were to say something like, we live in a very feminine culture when we look to media advertising, uh, just generally all throughout the West, the direction things are going, we see this Overton window being increasingly shifted towards the feminine side of things, and that's why you see anti-bullying campaigns constantly and sort of this victim culture mentality. Not that being a victim is a product of being feminine, but when femininity is out of balance in a culture en masse like that, you could say that that is going to be an effect, whereas masculinity out of balance could be like hyper violence you know, like just at the snap of the tiniest thing people are being violent everywhere and I'm sure we can think of certain cultures around the world that might fall into that category so we want a balance of the yin and yang masculine feminine and how uh, can we do this in our lives I've talked a lot about nutritional effects but another one is what you take in in terms of media and just entertainment I had an experience recently that had me want to look into this and try and understand this a little more and largely I had this information available already, I just hadn't applied it in this way and I was getting ready to go outside to do a workout and I often might watch some kind of new training technique before doing that and that gets me pumped up, you see someone else working out, you want to work out yourself. But after watching this, whatever it was I was going to do, uh, I went on Facebook quickly and just browsing through my news feed, there was a fluffy animal video or a picture or I can't remember exactly what it was, but I see this stuff constantly. It, it almost seems like there's more of it now than there used to be. Just animal videos of varying types, animals being cute, whether it's baby otters doing something and squeaking or puppies of all kinds doing various things, acting weird, cats and kittens doing things. And these are obviously kind of addicting in their own right. And we're going to get into what effects those have in terms of their hormonal effect, um, in terms of a beneficial effect. But first, I'm going to talk about the negative. Now, there hasn't been a study just on animal videos, obviously, as far as I know. But this one study, which I'll link to below, uh, measured salivary hormone levels of testosterone and progesterone in men and women with three different types of movies. One was a neutral movie. It was just a nature documentary uh, with nothing uh, that would be theorized as stimulating um, these basal levels of hormones. Then there was a um, sort of like a love or romance type movie. And then there was a very sort of aggressive movie, which was, I think, The Godfather 2 in this study. So in men, what happened after... Each movie is pretty predictable. The neutral movie didn't have any up or down effect, really. So high testosterone men, or men that are healthy, is what I would say. I'm sure there's lower testosterone men who might not have this effect. Um, but the exact wording is high T men in the affiliation arousal condition, which is the romance movie condition, whose post-movie testosterone levels, uh, when examined, they actually dropped. So I don't think it's a very big stretch to say when you go on to look at these really cutesy animal things that are flooding the internet. And I, I mean, I've been around online since it's always been around. And cat and animal pictures were a thing at first. And then when video came along, slowly these things caught on. I think it's getting to be bigger now because just with Facebook pages, they tend to go viral for some reason on these pages that specialize in these uh, cute animal videos. So yeah, I would just watch them just because they're there, and if it's an animal that looks cute just on the sort of thumbnail, one just tends to click it, because they're usually very short too. But this probably has a compounding effect, and I, after watching it, when I was going out to exercise, I suddenly felt I had less 
motivation to exercise. I still did it. For all I know, it might not have been as good of a workout had I simply not watched it or had watched something even more violent. <laughs> so when you watch conflict, and this can also be verbal conflict, I've personally found, if I get into a heated debate online, I find I'm, I've got a little more pep in my step. Uh, so that testosterone boost that comes from these things, um, and by the way, if you lose a fight or you're watching someone lose, this has also been recorded in people who are cheering for a sports team. If the sports team you self-identify with loses, your testosterone drops. So one could say that's an argument for not um, getting too wrapped up in that kind of thing. So if you're purely looking at it from the biological or hormonal level, you won't always identify with whomever's going to win. And in the case of watching a movie, if you kind of understand the premise of the movie and understand the, you know, big macho guy is going to win in some capacity, you're probably going to get a boost from that. You know, the rise of the anti-hero in uh, movies and TV, I think this probably mirrors that uh, because obviously crime is associated with higher testosterone. That's been demonstrated. So I think people are wanting even bigger kicks. So by taking some bad guy and making him like the central role in a TV or movie show, it even gives a bigger kick. So, you know, think the common one, Breaking Bad. So many people got a kick out of that because it's this normal everyday person who, um, you know, gets flung out of their life in this crisis scenario of having cancer and they turn to crime to try and make money to afford their cancer treatment. So this theory about this stuff is important to keep in mind. I think it slips under a lot of people's radar. And you can also turn it to your advantage if you're feeling uh, in a place that you want to go the other way. You want to increase oxytocin, you know, looking at cute animal videos. Um, actually, I think the study I'm thinking of is when your dog looks at you, you get a spike of oxytocin. Uh, so I'd assume the same thing would happen with um, cute animal videos. So romance movies, you're going to get a, what this study showed is a boost in progesterone. And that's beneficial in that it helps flush out excess estrogens. So even though it causes testosterone to drop, you're still getting the beneficial effect of potentially toxic estrogens, which for both men and women can be problematic. Women's cycles, they have peaks of estrogen that are necessary, but after puberty, they don't want a lot of estradiol, the most potent type of estrogen floating around in the body. It actually increases your chances of breast cancer, and it's also very triggering for virtually all other types of cancer. Um, cancer is a very estrogen-dominant disease, and there's two things that can really fight disease. Being in a state of intense conflict, aka violent situations, um, so your body's going to utilize everything it has more efficiently, your immune system's going to improve, unless you crash from exhaustion. An example of this would be like in prisons, people can get really buff with less calories because they have a set diet. They're not allowed to eat 8,000 calorie diets and become bodybuilders. They're given two or more thousand calories a day or whatever it is, yet they can get jacked. It's because prison is a high intense dangerous place to be, so your body becomes really efficient with what calories and protein it gets. And then on the progesterone side, women who are pregnant, um, they get a blast of progesterone through that pregnancy, and that has been known to kill cancer cells. So that is all very interesting to keep in mind, I think. Um, you can use it strategically, other than scenarios where there's just a really good movie out that doesn't fall into that category. Pretty much all the movies I watch are action slash uh, sort of medieval fantasy or, you know, anything that has sort of that conflict in it that um, is about violence, basically. That's just what I've always liked. I mean, if dramas are your thing, go for it. But uh, you really have to think about what it's doing to you. And maybe if you do a bit of that and push into new territory, you might find you start to lose taste for another thing because you start to enjoy the anabolic effect of watching what stereotypically is known as masculine uh, viewing material. Throw out this weak sissy shit. Like, you hear about people today watching, like, as adults, watching things like um, My Little Pony and all this, and it's kind of mind blowing. And there's the stereotypes of the people that do that. And when you see pictures of them, overweight, unhealthy looking, or really skinny, and it just goes to show how much one feeds the other. So, is it because they're in that state that they're attracted to that type of viewing material? Or does that viewing material contribute to? their state of being unhealthy and unfit. It probably has a back and forth, um, one feeds into the other kind of effect, but um, 
yeah, once you understand this, you need to take control of yourself. So really ask yourself, is the content you're viewing kind of have something behind it? Are the role models you're identifying with people that you'd want to actually be yourself? Or are you just getting caught in some kind of emotional drama associated with the show, which has an addictive quality to it, but it's probably pretty unhealthy, like being addicted to soap operas. I'm sure that causes some horrible hormonal cascade. It would be great to have whole hormonal panels done with a whole wide range of things to see the effects in different people. But really in this field, we only have these preliminary type uh, research that just looks at a few of the big hormones and a, a few of the stereotypical types of movies or shows. Um, and yeah, we can take from that what we will and make the best of it. So let me know what you think about this video. Like, favorite, and comment if you feel so inclined. And I will talk to you again soon. Take care and embrace life without limits.